This video is going to give you a short introduction into the E223 prototype electronics kit and just give you some basic advice about how to use this kit. The videos for each of the experiments are already online and you can go through those for individual experiments but just I'm just going to run through the components themselves and just give you a little bit of advice. So that's the kit in its entirety, it's in sections and please take care to make sure that when you return the kit at the end that the components are in the same sections as outlined in the sheet that's attached to your kit. So the kit itself uh, is made up of many different components. We have our, our connection components first of all in the top corner. Here you can see this is our breadboard. It's made up of rows and columns. Um, each one of these um, columns are connected together and with a break in the center line. The rows then can be used to set up your plus and minus ra uh, voltage rails. Uh, the W in the middle breaks the connection, so just make sure you bridge the connection. It comes with a separate connection, a separate piece as well that can be just uh, connected in on either side, depending on how you want to. It'll just slot into the into the slot at the side. As well as that, there's connection wire, and um, you know initially I, I believe there's a shortage of these cables, but uh, uh, the rest will be distributed when they become available. So these cables can be used to connect up all uh, all the boards and um, your, your circuits. Um, also in here there's a DC motor which looks like this. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to use it and we, we have a servo motor that I hope to use later on. The servo motor, motor is, uh, it, it moves to a particular angle when, you, when it's rotated. Um, there's a connection strip, I'm not sure, if, or a terminal box sorry, that we can use um, but I'm not sure that we need it for, for these experiments at the moment. Uh, over on this side we have uh, the Arduino, uh, which we'll use in the later experiment. The Arduino um, allows us to uh, build a, a basic prototyping environment and uh, it's there. There's a USB cable with it which allows you to connect it to the PC. Uh, the USB cable will also provide power. So um, you know, on the Arduino you'll see there's a power jack and a USB connector. The USB connector is all you need uh, if you're connecting it into a laptop or a desktop PC. It'll power itself through the USB port. Uh, so there's the connector. There's also a, um, a cap like this and a 9 volt battery. Just take care not to short the leads as you're going to short the battery. That can connect in to, to create the 9 volt battery to use our connectors and to use our circuitry. Don't connect. This is a 9 volt battery. Most of the circuitry is running at 5 volts. So you need to make sure that you look at the video on how to create a, how to use a voltage regulator. Otherwise, you'll damage the ICs in the kit. So that's the that's the type of nine volt battery and, and whatever. There's an alternative to this, which is looks like this, where we can use uh, four AA batteries. So haven't supplied any, you can supply them yourself. And then there's the two leads, and it's the same same effect. Uh, you can you can connect the cap to the top of that, and that allows you then to connect in four AA batteries. Obviously. They're 1.5 volts, so 1.5 times 4 is, is 6 volts, uh, but 6 volts should be sufficient uh, if we're running at nine, uh, circuits of 5 volts. Uh, so that's, that's that part of the kit. Um, as well as this, we have, um, in, we have um, resistors, and these are bagged and, and labeled. Um, you know, there is one, one set, there, there is one set of resistors. Uh, where you have 50 resistors and that's because they're the particular ones that may be used for LEDs depending on your circuitry but the rest of them are, are labelled. It would be useful if you could keep them uh, within the bags as, as they're labelled so you can find them again. Alternatively there's a diagram that shows you how to use the colour codes uh, to read the value of the resistor so use that there to, to, to read the values. As well as that there's there are some diodes in the kit and uh, um, these look like, I suppose they look like they have the same shape as a resistor except there's a little line that indicates the, the, the direction of the diode and I've, I've given a figure for that there. Uh, here are the display components. There's uh, seven segment displays that look like this. Uh, seven segment displays have a set of pins on the bottom and um, you just have to be just careful to look at the pinouts in each case but generally the center pin is the pin that's either common cathode or common anode and the center pin on both sides is generally connected directly together. Um, the numbers on the side of the components indicate, uh, you, you'll have to look it up, but you can find out if it is common cathode or common anode. There's things like a, a light dependent resistor which changes its resistance depending on the light levels in the room. 
um, there's um, a, a dot matrix display like this. Hopefully I'll get to do something with this. It's a red green dot matrix display. Um, there's um, uh, sockets and uh, a little display like this. Now I haven't I haven't actually decided if this can be used yet or not. Uh, we'll have to solder pins to it before it can be used. Um, uh, we'll, um, contact me if you want to do something with this, but uh, or we can get the, the technicians will hopefully help with their technical staff will hopefully help with that. Um, as well as that, there's there's uh, several boxes of ICs. Um, each one of these boxes is segregated in some way. Um, try not to touch the pins on the ICs as they're they're, they're somewhat statically sensitive. Now I know that's difficult. Maybe if you can ground yourself by touching a radiator or something that's connected to the, you know, to ground yourself to art, well, it'll help with uh, with the static, with, with your stat with reducing the static effects. Um, each IC uh, is different. They have a number on them. Um, the difficulty is actually working out which IC is which. I've put in a, 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 the numbers on the on the on the di on the on the figure to help you to help explain that but you still have to look it up. Each IC is different, it has a different pin out, different points sometimes for connecting voltage to, so please take care. Don't connect an IC until you've looked at the data sheet or a figure that I've supplied. So there are the ICs, we have the AND OR gates and input gates and so on, we have the counters that we need and full adders, we have the flip flops that are available, the memory storage devices that are available, and down further we have different things that take the form of a, a package, a dip package, uh, we have um, we have also have down here some of the decoders and encoders, and here we have the five five timers, op amps, and so on. These all take the package at uh, that form. Um, the LEDs, there's there's sixty LEDs. Um, be careful with the, the length of the leg. The positive leg is longer. Uh, try and keep them in bags because uh, it's very difficult, especially on the clear ones, to tell the difference between the blue ones and the and the red ones uh, when they're when they're not powered. And you'll notice that there's a different current and voltage rating on each one of the components. So these are 20 milliamp 3.35 volts, and they're all diff they're all different. Here I've got some transistors and voltage regulators. Um, uh, transistors we haven't done an experiment for that yet, but the voltage regulators we can use to connect uh, power to our to our circuit. As well as this, then we have some potentiometers and switches. Potentiometer has a variable resistance depending on, on the, the angle, the, how far you rotate it. We have a large version and also small versions. And we also have some of these little dip switches that are on off depending on, the, on, the, on, on where you place them. So we might use those in an experiment. Uh, finally we have uh, the capacitors. And the capacitors you have to be particularly careful of. These are the electrolytic capacitors and you'll see that they have a different leg length. The shorter leg is the negative leg and the longer leg is the positive leg. The generally larger value capacitors tend to be electrolytic uh, to keep the cost down but just be careful with these they will explode if you use them in the wrong direction and um, they do give off fairly nasty uh, chemicals and gases so just be a, just be careful particularly careful of these um, just and don't connect them um, backwards at, at all costs finally you've got your um, ceramic fuses and your um, which, which look, um, there's, a, there's a capacitor and a fuse, the fuse has kind of uh, squiggly lines. The fuses are, are uh, PTC temperature controlled uh, fuse, fuses. When the current goes above a certain level, um, the heat up and the fuse breaks. And then when they cool down again, they, 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 you, can, you can use them again. So they're, they're a nice um, safety feature to add to a circuit and we'll look at that again. You also have then capacitors and they have numbers on them. Like this one says 4732, which is a 47 nanofarad capacitor. The smaller values tend to be ceramic. They don't have uh, a polar polarity, which means that it doesn't matter which direction in the kit, which direction you connect them when you're using them. So that's the general form of the kit. Um, please take care of it. Um, the, um, and make sure that the components are replaced if they're damaged. If components are damaged, Put them aside, keep them in a bag or something, we'll replace them um, but, and just hand back the, the damaged co the components as we can test to see if they can be, if they can be recycled in any way at, at all. Um, if they are damaged beyond repair, just keep a list of all the components that are damaged beyond repair and, re and replace them so that you get your full deposit back.
This sheet that comes with the kit describes the, the particular components and where they should be. Here's a diagram here just to show you the resistor color codes, but apart from that, everything else explains the, uh, the position of the components and also gives you an indication of the IC numbers against exactly what type of uh, uh, component we're using. Um, the last thing that I just want to show you is the um, is if you, just in case you haven't seen this before, um, this is a multimeter that uh, is available with the kits. Um, this multimeter uh, is a is a basic uh, multimeter, and it just allows you to do some measurements. We'll typically be measuring resistor values, or uh, uh, most often measuring voltage levels. Um, so. This, this, this multimeter works like this, we just rotate the dial, so if we want to measure continuity for example, if we want to find out if two points are connected together, um, you can see that this allows us to do this by touching, gives us an indication of continuity. So continuity is by turning the one, turn, turning it to the value with the kind of the speaker uh, direction on it. Um, we might also want to measure voltage, DC voltage is here. Um, if we're typically measuring voltage in the range of zero to uh, well zero to five volts. Uh, so twenty provides us with the upper band on the scale. So that allows us to measure then the voltage on the uh, on the on the on what we're doing uh, on the part that we're measuring. Uh, there's a light button to turn on the light on the dial, and that's that obvious. Um, there's also a hold. Be careful. The H symbol comes up when the H is up. The measurement isn't going to change. It just it just uh, remembers whatever value you currently have. So if you're trying to measure something and the H is up, well, you're not going to get any uh, reading at all. Um, plug the um, plug the the red one into the middle and the black one into the right hand side if we're measuring uh, voltage. Uh, we might also want to measure resistance value. So for example, if we have a resistor and and we we want to know what its value is and we're too lazy to look up the chart. Uh, we could just t take the resistor and set it like this, rotate it around, and we'll take a guess that it's less than 200k kilo ohms, and then we just measure the, the resistance value across the terminals. And we can see that it's 0, 0, 0, 0002, which means that we don't have sufficient scale or, or resolution to measure exactly what it is. So if we want to find what it is, we know that, well, it's less than, it's less than 200k, we can go down to 20k, and you'll see we still get 0.22 is what we're getting. So at a rough guess, it's 220 ohms. Uh, so we'll go down to 2000, which is measured 2K. So to get an exact value, we're getting down, we're getting 220 ohms. So 221220 ohms. Uh, so this is a 220 ohm resistor. If we were getting it in the, in the K range, well, it would be 220K. So because, there's, uh, because it's down at 2000 ohms, it means that we're getting a value of 220, or roughly around 220 ohms. So that's the way that we use this. Remember to turn it off to, to, to keep the bat to keep the battery um, to keep the battery. Otherwise, the um, um, it, it'll have to be replaced. To replace the battery, you can open it up with a screwdriver and put in a 9 volt battery if, if your battery does go flat.